What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're getting directly into the swing. We're gonna help you use the bigger muscles, use your whole body instead of just your hands in the swing so that you can not only maximize your consistency, but also your power as well. Now, this is something that I work on in my own game because I do have a tendency for this, but I also get this question a lot, guys, all right? A real lot. So, people show me swings all the time. When you initiate the swing with the hands, the sequence of movement can often be compromised, right? That's kind of the main thing we're looking at here. It's the disconnect between the club and the rest of your body. And what we're looking at is when the hands really start to take away, the club will get behind the hands and that's a difficult position because what you're gonna find is that more often than not, you're gonna get one of two things, all right? The main one being the equal and opposite reaction, which would mean that because the club goes behind on the way back, it also then comes over the top on the way down, all right? So you get the direct reaction to what you did in the backswing. That means we come over the top. That means we're going out to in, we're going across the ball. We all know that's pretty hard to work with and to maximize your distance potential. The other side would be that you essentially stay on the same plane, so you deliver the club pretty well. However, because of the position of the club and the disconnect to the body, we get quite a shortened range of motion and a short backswing. So again, we're not maximizing our ground forces, the overall rotational pattern, and basically the long and wide arc that we want to create a powerful swing. Okay, so what we're gonna look at here is to use the core and use the whole body to start the club takeaway, okay? Because the sequence of motion, obviously there's always a lot of factors in the swing, but basically if we can create the best grounded takeaway using the whole body, get the club in a great position once we get back into the midpoint of the backswing, the rest of the swing is gonna follow on pretty well, all right? So what we're looking at, again, is not to use the hands when we take the club away, is to use the whole body as we start. So that one piece takeaway idea, and I really like to relate it to the body because obviously we can all understand how that feels, and there's a couple of key points that I look for to create this motion and to get things wrong, okay? So now, as we get set up, whatever your hand position, whatever you're working towards, uh, obviously, grip-wise, club face, we're gonna see different relationships relative to your body, we gotta match it all up, okay? But I'm gonna take my grip. As we get set, what I'm looking to do then is to make sure I'm engaged, but relaxed, all right? That's that natural setup position. You can feel the ground between, beneath both feet, even front to back, nice and ready to go, all right? You're not too far in the toes, too far in the heels, because that, again, is gonna throw off our center of gravity and how our body, how our core engages throughout the swing, okay? So once I'm set, I wanna match that club face up and two keys early in the takeaway. One, it's kind of one of the oldest things uh, I can remember in terms of the golf swing, is just to keep the back of the left hand at the target for the first six inches of the swing, okay? Because once we break those hands, as we saw earlier on, the club gets behind the hands, then we start to rotate, and that club just gets stuck further and further behind us in a difficult position, okay? So if we can maintain the grip for the first six inches of the swing, the club points out nicely, staying outside of the hands, and then the wrists can work much more naturally as we start to create the second key point, which is gonna be that really solid, stable trail side. Okay, and here's where the core really comes into it, because what I like to think about is, once we're pushing that trail foot into the ground, we're then gonna turn the body against that side, which is gonna allow us to not only load into the ground, but it's also gonna allow us to rotate and get the musculature working around the spine, around the hip, in the most effective and natural way possible. All right, obviously this will look slightly different for everyone, relative to your function, your range of motion, but once you start to understand this and start to execute, the whole body's gonna be connected to the ground, to itself, and that's where you're gonna get that separation, you're gonna get that great sequence on the way down as well, okay? So maintaining that neutral club face, what I like to think about is that when I start my turn, I directly turn my core over my trail quad, okay? And what you should feel once you're doing this is that the trail foot is gripping the ground, you're feeling that torque, you're feeling that rotation, you're creating that downward pressure, then you start to turn around, so the core goes over the trail quad, the trail hip turns inside the heel. Now that's important because we don't just want to go lateral, we want to make sure we are rotating and creating that pressure, okay? So, 
Once those hands are neutral and we turn the core onto that trail thigh, we've got a really solid base to turn around. The spine's in a great position now to actually create rotation. And because the club head is matched up with the rest of the body, we don't get that flip behind the hands. And from there, physiologically, naturally, our body is going to allow us to take it to a good top of the back swing position. Okay, so again, going through it. Neutral club face for the first six inches. Engage your core over your trail quad whilst pushing the ground. So we take it back, we enter a really solid position. You should feel your core working against that trail foot. And at that point, the club cannot continue to go laterally. It has to come up to the top of the swing. Okay, so you're going to get the natural wrist hinge at the right time, which means that we're set to the top of the swing. We're engaged, we're ready to push out of the ground, we're ready to release, which is going to be our pull motion of the left side, through the lats, through that body that you've just been rotating up to the top, and that's your sequence, okay? Because you've created that solid position to work around, you can create all of those forces at the right time with a stable club face, which is a pretty good chance of meaning that you go way up in terms of distance and consistency, okay? so. That's, that's the main part of the takeaway. That's what I really focus on. The last piece for me has always been to try and get the left shoulder, my lead shoulder, pointing towards the trail foot. Okay, so we've got our stable club face, we've got our core engaged in that solid trail side to complete to the top of the swing. Really get that left shoulder moving, that lead shoulder. Try and go as far as you can, obviously 90, 100 degrees, maybe more if you're really feeling it and you can really move, guys, okay? Once you get that full turn, the club's going to be deep, it's going to be in a great wide position at the top, but it's also going to be matching your body, so when you start to download, when you start to turn into the swing, you're going to see some incredible movements, guys, right? You're really going to be working it well. The club's going to be in line with your body. As you push out the ground, you get that natural kinematic sequence, legs, hips, torso, arms, hands, club. That's that generation of force, which means the whole body's working. The extremities load all the power, and because of all those stable positions, because your core's firing, you're going to be in a great position to get it done, guys, all right? So, this is something where you can directly affect it with your training as well. You think about all the things we use our core for, that stability, that ability to move is huge. Something like the medicine ball slams with that step to rotate, you create exactly the same sequence, you're pressing into the ground, you're loading around that side, and then you release it. Okay, so this is how to get your body in the best shape possible and to use your body in the best way possible to create a solid, consistent body led swing. Okay, that's where I'm at, guys, all right? And I'm pretty sure that you can make this work with whatever other fundamentals you put into your game. Like I said, you can work strong face, weak face, you can get it all going. It's just a case of matching your body to the physical demands of the swing, lining it up being consistent and then making sure that you're absolutely loading everything you can through the ground, through your car and then into the club. All right, we'd love to hear how you get on with this drill guys, all right, this is a good one. This is something you can always work on regardless of positions at the top or where you want your hands to be. This is still a constant because this is where your body needs to be. You can work those hands wherever you need them to be after that guys, all right. So, match your training to your body, match your body to your swing, you're going to see some good things, all right? So, hit the comments below, let me know that you get something out of this one, go to work on it, put the time in, build a stronger car, build a stronger game, guys, all right? That's what it's all about, go strong. So, remember, download the app, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, join the movement.